Maca's guides. <laughs> hey guys, Maca here with the long awaited gaming setup slash office tour video. I always get questions from you guys, what kind of microphone I use, the monitors I use to game, the PC I have to edit. This is my entire setup that I've been building for the better part of 10 years. For those who are unaware, I started a long time ago. I've been editing on laptops for like nine years and I finally made some upgrades and I'm pretty comfortable and really happy with my current setup. But we're gonna go over everything from the desk to the keyboard to all the collectibles I have in the background of when I stream. So I'm really excited for this and uh, yeah, we're just gonna have a good time. All right, so we'll start off with this chair. It is a Max Nomic, AKA Need for Seat chair, but it is branded with the Xbox logo. There's a pretty cool story behind this. Microsoft partnered with this chair company specifically to make chairs for, I think, like local tournaments as well as events and stuff. And they had a couple left over and then they asked me if I wanted to get one. So I obviously said yes, I'm not gonna say no to it. They wanted to kind of test the market to see if people were interested in buying a chair like this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they ever ended up selling it, uh, but it's a really cool chair. It's like the racing seat style, has green stitching to match the Xbox brand. It's pretty comfortable, it's served me well. I've sat in it every day. It is taking a little bit of a beating in the armrests, but otherwise, I love this thing. So now we'll move on to the table itself. The story behind it's pretty simple. Walked into Ikea and I found the biggest desk they sold and it was this one. They recommend that you get it with like a standing desk, so the motorized kind of legs. I didn't want a motorized one, it was way too expensive and I would never stand at a desk. So I just bought three normal legs and then I bought this Alex cabinet as like the fourth leg and I'm really happy with it. Uh, a lot of the Ikea desks are made of particle board but I knew I'd have a lot of weight in the center of the table. So I wanted to go with like a solid piece of wood and I think that's what's inside of this. Uh, so I don't have to worry about putting too much weight in the middle and I don't need like a fifth leg in the middle to support that weight. I don't have to worry about the table bending. So that's kind of the story of the table. I think it's like 63 and a half inches and it's pretty deep. Um, so I got a lot of desk space, the monitors, the keyboard, and I don't really have to worry about running out of space especially when I have two giant monitors like this. Um, so this is the 27GL850. I made a actual video for it. Uh, I use it right now, it's connected to my Xbox. And this is kind of the big brother version of that. It's a 38 inch, um, I think it's the 850G and it's widescreen, so it's 21 by nine. Uh, it is a 3840 by 1600. Uh, monitor. I have this connected to my PC and it, they both are serving me well. They're both IPS panels. They both have one millisecond response times. Uh, they can do up to, uh, you know, a hundred plus FPS. So I never have to worry about running out in that space. And the colors are great. The viewing angles are great. And uh, these have been a treat to work with for the past little while. Now this monitor is obviously connected to a computer which is down below. This computer was probably my most recent purchase and my biggest purchase probably out of everything in this office. It has a 2080 graphics card. It has one of the better, I think 8700K Intel chips. It has two terabytes of SATA SSD and two terabytes of NVMe M.2 SSD, the Fire CUDA 510. Uh, it also has uh, 32 gigs of RAM, which is really important when you're editing a lot of video, doing a lot of multitasking. The RAM is kind of the bottleneck for me. So I, uh, I kind of got a pre-built, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I actually figured out all the parts inside and I parted it out. And the price I got on this was almost the exact same as part for part. So I didn't have to build it. I have a warranty under the manufacturer and I have the individual warranty for each part inside as well. And I was able to upgrade it by adding a little bit of RAM and swapping out some of the SSDs on my own and kind of get my dream computer going all at once. And it has served me well. I can render 1080p 60 FPS or in 4K, not have to worry about rendering times, not have to worry about any program slow up if I have a lot of different windows open all at the same time. Now, what do I use to actually uh, you know, control the computer? So on the desk, I have a huge mat by SteelSeries. 
It's the biggest mat they sell. On that, I have the Black Widow Chroma, the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2, which has a little adjustable uh, arm pad to keep my wrists from getting, uh, you know, tired out. The mouse I use and I swear by is the Logitech MX Master, and they have a second and a third version now. Uh, there are some upgrades in those, but none that I really need, so I've decided to stick with the older version. Also, for the keyboard, I went with a little rainbow theme, which I thought looked pretty cool. You can go crazy. You can design your own little uh, patterns, or you can have even have it animate when you click in certain buttons, which you know some people like, some people don't. Um, and then we'll move on to some of the Xbox stuff, which is tucked away all the way in this back corner. You can barely see it. So I'll bring it out when applicable. This is the headset I use, which probably isn't a good place to start. Um, so I have an Xbox One X sitting in the corner. And to that, I have connected three hard drives. I have the Seagate one terabyte SSD, which is uh, really great. I store all my like the games I play the most. Then I have a two terabyte slim, which you can barely see. And I also have an eight terabyte hub sitting in the back. I'll put pictures on screen of some of the uh, kind of background shots. So that's the Xbox itself. I got the three hard drives to store all the games I could possibly think of. For the controller, I have this sitting right here and it is connected to the Xbox. And that is because it is the Elite Series V2, which is connected. Uh, you can charge it through the case. So every night before bed, I'm done gaming. I put the controller in the dock and it starts uh, charging for me so that the next morning I don't have to worry about recharging it and, and the batteries. Now the headset I use for gaming, I'm not much of a person to get the audio from the monitors. So I use a headset. This is the Turtle Beach Elite Pro Tournament. I've been using this exact pair of headphones for I think three or four years now. They're getting a little dinged up. They have a little broken part in them, but they've served me well and they're extremely comfortable. I can wear them for as long as I need without having to worry about sweating or uh, any kind of pressure headaches. So uh, if you're in the market for a great pair of headphones, I have a separate review of these and I'll link it as well if you are interested. Now I need a way in order to interface my Xbox with my computer so that I can capture gameplay from the Xbox to the computer. That's what you see here. This is actually Streamlabs. I have a separate program uh, that I use directly for the capture card. Now the capture card is very well hidden underneath the monitor. I use the Aver Media Live Portable Gamer 2 Plus. It basically allows me to have 4K pass-through. So if I am playing in 4K on my Xbox, although I'm capturing in 1080p, I can actually play my game in 4K. So it's kind of very specific to this current gen. It is a little bit outdated. It's not the best capture card I've ever, you know, uh, on the market by any means, but it does the trick for my workflow and what I do here. So uh, I'm okay with that. And then on the actual computer for streaming, I use Streamlabs OBS. For editing, I use Vegas. And for capturing from the capture card, I use RE Central, which is just kind of Aver Media's built in program. Obviously, we got Twitter running. I'm on Twitter a lot. And I have some more equipment here specific to streaming. I do have these two speakers. They're really basic budget speakers I just found on Amazon. Uh, links down below if you want. They're, they're nothing great, but they, they serve the trick. And then I have a couple of very specific things here. This is an Elgato Stream Deck. And what it does, it is it basically allows me to have a series of 15 programmable buttons. I can actually make folders inside. So I, here I have four buttons that control my lighting in my room. I have some emotes for the Twitch chat. I can change the scenes in my stream. We can cut the camera or mute the, audio, uh, the microphone audio. We can open up programs, run giveaways, and make clips. You can get pretty creative with this. It can tweet for you. Um, it actually has a lot of really cool settings. So I'll actually show you what it looks like when, for example, we have it connected to an Elgato key light. Now relax, I already know the comments are gonna be like, you spent how much on a light? And lighting is actually uh, pretty expensive and I had some kind of very specific needs that I wanted to fill. I wanted to make sure I could get a light that I could mount to a desk. So it's mounted to the back of the desk via a pole. I wanted to make sure I had a light that filled a room, uh, soft light and didn't overheat because I have a lot of electronics. 
the room gets really hot. And this was actually cheaper than a lot of the other options that you can find at like professional camera stores. So uh, I did buy this. It might seem like a lot of money and it is, but uh, it really was like the perfect fit exactly what I needed. And I can control it via my PC using my mouse or with the stream light. This is gonna ruin the lighting of the video. We can turn it off and on like that. We can change the brightness of it. We can change the temperature of the white so we can do different white balances. We can interface it with streams so that when people sub, it can turn off and on, which isn't for me, but it is an option. So the Elgato Key Light and the Elgato Stream Deck, I um, they were kind of like some of the more recent additions, but they have really helped my stream setup. So if you ever see me on twitch.tv slash Mac91Productions, the quality there has been slowly going up because of things like this. And if you do stumble across my stream, you will be able to see me through a camera. And that is this one right here. It's the Logitech C920, a little bit outdated. They have way newer models that do way better things. But I think this one serves the trick as long as you have a bright light in front of you. It looks just fine in my opinion. The only thing I would kind of change if I were to upgrade would be to get a green screen right behind my chair so I could edit out the background and be floating head guy on Twitch which I think looks pretty nice, but it's a big upgrade and a big way to kind of change your room. And it's not something if, you know, I don't know if that's something I want to do. It's uh, something I've been thinking about. And then last but not least, what I've been talking into this whole time is the, there's three parts to this. The arm itself is the Rode PSA-1 boom mount arm. And it is a really great arm. It's super flexible does 360, I have the cable mounted underneath the table, uh, which works great. Uh, I can spin this thing around out of the way whenever I need to. And I did actually have a cheaper one that I bought first, but it wasn't able to hold the weight of the microphone. So I ended up having to return it and go for something a little bit better. At the end of the mount or the boom arm, we have a Samson SP-01 Spider shock mount. Uh, it was like the perfect size for the microphone I bought, which is the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is the USB version, which allows me to plug it right into a computer without needing a special box to uh, basically uh, interface XLR cables between computers. So I kind of skipped that step and went, went for a USB microphone, which works perfectly. Got a little mutter for the top to make sure that the popping peas don't pop too much when I do talk. And uh, like I said, the cable is kind of mounted to the bottom of the table. And all of these things are plugged into a power brick. Now, recently I bought these, which are like Velcro pads. And I actually, and a bunch of cable ties to kind of uh, clean up my setup a little bit. Now it's not great. We're gonna show you underneath, but I took one of these Velcro pads and Velcroed one side to the bottom of my table and the other side to my power brick. And I actually was able to mount the power brick to the bottom of the table which got a lot of cables out of the way and really cleaned up my setup pretty much instantly. So I was really happy with that decision. Even if the cables still look bad, they looked a lot worse before. Now the cables underneath the desk are pretty disastrous. Uh, I definitely have a lot more to do in terms of fixing those up. I probably have to just do a full rewiring of everything, uh, but that's kind of on my bucket list. And then one thing you might have noticed that I still haven't touched on is this padding on the back wall. This is, some people would call it like acoustic foam or sound panels. I don't know, they have a bunch of different names. And basically when you're recording audio, as your voice projects out into the room, it's bouncing off stuff and coming back to you. So you can put stuff like this on the wall to basically soften your echoes. And if you have a hardwood floor, you'd probably want a carpet. And it just helps the audio when you're talking sound less hollow and less bouncy and less echoey. So that's why I have that kind of mounted there. I have a carpet in the room to make sure we don't have too much echoes. And we have the screens in front of us when we record that kind of absorb some of the sound. So that is for the most part my desk setup. I'm gonna show you some of the art in the room next and some of my collectibles that show up in the background. All right, so here we have two pretty cool pieces of art uh, that are kind of hanging up on the wall. They are Xbox related. So this right here was given to me when the Xbox One X came out, it actually has my gamer tag on it. And when I was given a review unit of the new console, they let us test some games over at one of their events.
they measured like our heart rate and stuff and then someone actually kind of drew it on so this was supposed to, this is supposed to be a representation of my brain activity when playing xbox so it's kind of cool it's kind of sentimental to me and then going from one sentimental piece to another this is actually a custom artwork that xbox sent me when i reached 500,000 gamer score you can kind of see that it's a, I guess a mosaic or a collage and each one of the little dots in this image is actually a screenshot or a screen grab from my videos. So this entire picture is made up of smaller pictures of which are from my videos, which is probably one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever received. I can't imagine the person who had to sit there and take screen grabs from my videos, but thank you very much to the person who did. Uh, I very proudly display this. Uh, over there, you can see me in the mirror now, this is uh, a different wall. I have a Call of Duty Modern Warfare poster from when the game got remastered a couple years ago. I really like the minimalist kind of art style of it. Thought it looked really cool. Uh, put it in a small frame, hung it up, and it's been there ever since. Uh, I don't know if, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is a great game, uh, good memories. And uh, the remaster was cool, but I just really liked the art, so I wanted to fill up the wall with something that I found cool. And last but not least, the biggest piece of artwork I own, which is actually a custom piece that was made by Xbox. So when they released Halo Wars 2, they had a campaign on social media where you could kind of share a story of uh, a time that you were victorious. And I shared a story about when I went to laser tag, and although I was the only person alive, I ended up winning. They actually made me my own movie poster. It says my name on it. I think I'm this guy right here, and these are all the enemies. Uh, but it's really cool. It's uh, one of a kind, uh, but it, another very thoughtful gift. And I also very proudly display this as well in my room. You can see it in the back of all my streams. And I just think it looks so cool that, uh, you know, it'd be a shame not to have it up. All right, and below this art piece, I have a shelving unit with a bunch of really cool things. So here, we'll start off with the Dying Light 2 statue. It was an E3 2019 exclusive, so you had to be there to get it. Uh, I was lucky enough to get one, barely fit in my suitcase back, but uh, apparently I'm number 1409 out of 1500. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, and I have it up here for now. But I think the goal is to kind of switch out statues uh, as I go and kind of replace them with new, newer and cooler things. I also recently got a chance to visit Ubisoft, Montre yeah, Ubisoft Montreal in September. And they sent me home with a statue of Cassandra, which I thought was really cool. You can actually buy this one on the Ubisoft uh, workshop storefront if you want one. Uh, I thought it looked cool, so it's up here for now as well. Next, I have one of my kind of proudest things I own, and that is the Xbox MVP award, and it comes with both the 2018 and 2019 uh, kind of year stack. This is an award that is given to what they say are uh, community leaders in the Xbox community, and I guess they decided that I was one of those people, and uh, I get to go to a summit in Seattle once a year because of this, and we get to talk about Xbox stuff with other MVPs. And uh, I'm very proud of getting this and really happy to be able to represent my part of the community and bring the messages forward to Xbox. Then we have two controllers. These are the rarest ones I have, I think. This is the very recently uh, given out London XO19 controller. I think there were a thousand of these made. Custom artwork on the front. Uh, it has little landmarks of London on it. And I just thought it looked cool, so we put it up here. And then next to that, I have the most ridiculous controller I own, which is the PUBG Grease Proof Controller. It's coated in like this plasticky substance so that it slides off. If you have grease on your hands from playing uh, PUBG and getting eating chicken dinners, uh, it, it kind of does that. This one's numbered number 156 out of 200. So apparently there's 200 of these things and I have one right here in the office, which I think is pretty cool. I have two little Sea of Thieves things. We're not gonna go over them, it's just a compass, and uh, what do you call this? Uh, tele, tele, uh, stethoscope, I forget what it's called. And then last but not least, my other most proud thing that I own, 
is of course my 100,000 silver play button for having 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Uh, I've been proudly looking at this every day since I got it and it stands right here and has yet to fall over and break, which is pretty exciting. Next, we're gonna move into the controllers. All right, so now we are here at ground level with the shelving unit. We got eight pockets of stuff here. We'll go through each thing kind of individually. We'll, uh, I'll highlight some of the cooler stuff and then we'll skip over some of the stuff that's maybe not as cool. In this corner right here, I have four controllers. The two kind of standout ones are the Gears of War 4 console specific controller, which I think looks really cool. It has like etched out carvings and a shiny D-pad. And then I also have the Sea of Thieves controller, which glows in the dark. It has the kind of translucent purple uh, accents on it, two separate colored uh, triggers. So that's a pretty cool controller. In the back here, I have a standard controller as well as a kind of camo green with the orange in the thumbsticks. Not my favorite, but uh, it's here just in case. In this corner down here, we have three controllers that are all that are all design labs. So this one in the back is supposed to be Star Wars themed. Um, it was sent to me by Xbox for, uh, I think they had a Star Wars movie promotion going on, which is kind of cool. And then these two in the front are my custom ones. We have the black on black on black, which I thought looked super cool. This was, I think my first one. And then my second one, we made a white one with some blue accents. We have blue thumbsticks, blue here, uh, blue triggers, which I think looks really cool as well. Continuing on with controllers, we have this second pocket over here. One of the coolest things I own is this Elite controller, and you might be wondering why, and that is because it is a prototype controller. So, kind of rare, kind of different. Thought I would kind of display it here for a bit, and uh, that is next to a day one controller. So I know a lot of you in the comments are probably gonna have this. This was a controller, it's a little dirty, hopefully not too dirty. But if you bought an Xbox One on the day of launch, you got a controller that says day one 2013 right in the middle. Uh, it doesn't really work very well, the sticks are all wobbly, the buttons barely press, but I still keep it here as a reminder that I was there on day one. A Re Recon Tech controller, not that special. Up here we have some Rainbow Six Siege um, little collectible dudes. You can buy some of these on the Ubisoft website. They're really cool. I used to play a ton of Siege. I don't play as much anymore, but I'm still a big fan of the game and a big fan of the operators. So I keep those there. Down here we have a White Elite controller, which is nothing too special, but the important part is this green D-pad, which was a E3. 2019 exclusive d-pad so uh, we're gonna be rocking that on there down here we also have the Starlink uh, gamepad for the Wii which is a little ridiculous but it's still really cool and then we also have this Mario Rabbid from when Ubisoft uh, announced uh, Raving Rabbids and the Mario game for the Switch I was there at E3 and everyone there went home with one of these up here we have a little homage to Cuphead, as well as Miss Chalice, who is coming in the next DLC. We have a Master Chief made out of Lego or Mega Bloks. And then in the back left corner, we have a Doom Guy Pop Funko, which was sent over by a viewer. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate it. And this little guy has been sitting with me in my office ever since. Last but not least, we have this Black Ops 4 hat, which looks like any other hat but it actually is a little bit unique, and that is because the inside of it is orange, and this hat was only made for people who attended the announcement of Black Ops 4. I did not attend the meeting there, but they sent me a hat anyways, because I guess they kind of like me, so I've decided to put it here. Additionally, you'll see my PlayStation controller hidden here. I do have a PlayStation 4, but I only really bring it out for when the exclusives are out, Otherwise, it's not really plugged in. Just to add a quick point, this is Maka, who's editing the video you're watching from the future. I forgot to mention I also have a really cool Sport Red controller that's signed by Major Nelson and Phil Spencer. I keep it in a separate room, which is why I forgot about it, but it is also really cool. I thought I would kind of add it into the video before we ended. 
Also, last but not least are the two electronics that I travel with. One is my Nintendo Switch. I'm just gonna put a random picture of a Switch here because you know what it looks like. And also an Acer Nitro 5 laptop, which was given to me by Intel. It has a pretty decent beefy graphics card, which lets me play some PC games on the go if I get a couple of free hours at the hotel room. Thank you guys so much for watching the office tour slash gaming setup video. I'm very thankful if you've made it this far in the video. Links to everything we talked about are in the description down below. And uh, thank you for watching. I'm very grateful to be in this situation where I can do this and make videos for you guys for YouTube. It's a dream come true. And a special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And shout out to Double O as well. Thank you for watching and hopefully I see you soon. Peace.